Nate, why don't you hit us with the first player and we are going to find some values for said player. Yeah. You know, I, I really enjoy this segment because we just get to bring some people to the table yeah. that we just want to talk about. And I, I, I genuinely want your opinion on these players, Mike. And I'm excited to do this podcast every week now because I get to pick your brain a little bit. Let's talk about Garrett Wilson. Uh, currently 27 overall on Keep Trade Cut, wide receiver 10. Still a top 10 wide receiver. Unfortunately, having a slightly disappointing start to the season. Wide receiver 39 so far. Uh, has 20 catches, 191 yards, and one touchdown. Uh, the connection has been there with Aaron Rodgers, but the Jets as a whole haven't looked that great. Um, they've had you know a game or so where they look good. They have a game or so where they look bad. Um, they haven't really found their rhythm yet. And meanwhile, you have Adam Lazard. You have Mike Williams also taking some targets and receptions away from Garrett Wilson. He's not the target hog that we've seen him be for the past two years when he was catching passes from Zach Wilson and whoever else they threw back there. So in this new Jets offense, which is not really new because it's what they you know, were set up to do last year, but we're yeah. finally really get to see it. Um, how are we valuing Garrett Wilson? Um, Mike, I brought three trades today. Let's run through them because they're all interesting ones because we're talking about big names here. Uh, Garrett Wilson is still pretty highly valued, so we're going to be talking big names in this trade. We got Roma Dunze and a second for Garrett Wilson. You know, I would like if you gave me an easier one. I feel like at that point I'm probably going to just hold Garrett Wilson for now. Okay. As you know, and look, Garrett Wilson, we know the talents there. We believe we just, even though he's been over a thousand yards, his first of his each seasons in the NFL, it's not what we were expecting. We we're expecting a little bit more. Hasn't had the best quarterback play. I think I'm just going to hold for right now. All right. I'm actually pretty interested in picking up Roma Dunze in a second for Garrett Wilson. I'm interested too. I, I probably start. could go either way. Um, unfortunately, Odunze hasn't really had that great of a season so far. He did have a big game against the Indianapolis Colts where he had 11 targets, six receptions for 112 yards and a touchdown. So I think as the Bears continue to develop, as Caleb Williams continues to develop, and if they can find an offensive line out there, um, I think I could look back and have Roma Dunze in a pretty similar tier to Garrett Wilson. If he's not there already from a dynasty uh, aspect, you know, just long, I mean, not like Garrett Wilson's old, but Roman Dunze is quite um, young as well as a rookie. So I could see them being in the same tier, you know, even by the end of the year, if Roman Dunze can kind of take off by the end, picking up the extra asset. I think I'm going to, I'm going to take the Roman Dunze side here. Right. Now it could depend if you're competitive, maybe you keep Garrett Wilson, but that's what we'll go there. All right, Mike, we talked about him a little bit on the last podcast. You were saying, you know, he's a big play machine, but he's making a lot of big plays, big plays here. Jamo in a first round pick or Garrett Wilson? I guess right now, I mean, Jameson Williams has been slightly more productive yardage wise and touchdown wise. Yeah. He's more of a big play guy. Like you said, he's getting those big plays, but I just feel like big plays are not something that you can have consistently over the season. I'm going to chalk it up to the Denver game just being a Jets clunker. Um, I'm going to probably hold Garrett Wilson here. If it was a different wide receiver, I would consider it mm. more more strongly than that. Like a Brian Thomas in a first. Yes. I'm more mm. interested in that. I would like that. Yeah. I would like that as well. It is interesting. You know, you bring up, you know, the big plays. Jamison Williams currently averaging 22.2 yards per insane. reception. It is insane. Um, also, of players, I'm going through here, of players in the top 30. Wide receivers, top 30 so far this season. He has the lowest reception. Um, count really? of those of the top 30 receivers uh, he only has 13 receptions the lowest of all of them so it really goes to show you know he's not getting huge volume but when he gets the ball he's making big plays with it definitely something to keep in mind but yeah uh, jmo in a first versus garrett wilson it's hard to pass up on a good player in a first round pick uh, but it is garrett wilson i will probably hold with garrett wilson but like you said you know brian thomas in the first i'll be taking that side yeah. Mike, the last one I got for you here, so we can, then we can move on to your guy. Trading Garrett Wilson for Justin Herbert straight up. Man, this is another guy who's getting on my crap list here. He has not thrown for over 200 yards in any game this season. Jim Harbaugh football right there. His highest was his past week, and that was 179 yards. This is not the Justin Herbert that we're used to. Mm -hmm. This Cannot be sustainable. You can't. I understand that they're winning games. I get it. You should be saying, dude, we just gave this guy a bunch of money. We, we're not, you know, you could pay somebody else 
a lot less money to throw for less than two hundred dollars or two hundred yards a game and manage the game for you. So I don't think it's sustainable. I'm probably going to go Justin Herbert here. Um, good quarterback help is hard to find. Still only twenty six. Yeah, so, you know, dynasty wise, you know, it's really nice to lock in. Um, uh, the likelihood is that he'll be a Charger longer than Jim Harbaugh will. It's true, probably. Um, it is interesting though. He is currently graded out the lowest of his career. It's a young career, only five years. This is his fifth season, but he is graded out much, much lower so far to start this year, according to PFF, than any season ever. Um, his lowest seasonal grade so far was in 2022 when he had a 77.9. And for PFF, anything like in the 70s is pretty good. Um, right now, through four games, 55.4, which is bad. He now, he has been dealing with an injury. Yeah, yeah, he does have a good touchdown and interception ratio, though, 5-1. to one. Yep, but also averaging uh, we're currently at 4.7 turnover-worthy plays. 4.7% uh, of his throws are turnover-worthy, which his career average is 2%. So he's also taking a bit more risks. Um, which is interesting considering he's not really throwing the ball nearly as much as he usually is. So uh, yeah. it is maybe they're just trying to gel out there in LA, but either way, we're talking way too much about Justin Herbert. Give me your next player. All right, let's talk about another jet and that's Brees Hall. What's going on again. We're saying this again here, 10 carries for four yards, Nate, and two receptions for 14 yards. And Oh, by the way, uh, no touchdowns in a nine to 10 loss. So gross. On the season, he's only got 56 carries, 174 yards, two touchdowns, only averaging 3.1 yards per carry, 18 receptions, 134 yards, and one touchdown. Oh, by the way, Braylon Allen on the season, Nate. Yeah. 27 carries, 130 yards, and one touchdown. He's averaging 4.8 yards per carry, seven catches, 57 yards, and one touchdown. Remember I said the possibility exists that the Jets do not extend Brees Hall because they have Braylon Allen. If they want to bring in another big name receiver, don't know what Aaron Rodgers is going to do after this season. Maybe they have to sign a quarterback. They're going to have to free some money up. This could be a way to do it. Yeah, I mean, it's a possibility. Um, I don't know what's going on with Brees Hall right now, but uh, let's go over the the trade values because I think I could see him being a buy because, hey, he starts off slow, but. He could finish the year super strong, still be a top five running back, honestly, with his ability he that he showed last year. I know the numbers do look bad, but he has been buoyed by his receiving work still. Um, he has 18 receptions so far this year for 134 yards. So he's still getting that reception work, which is keeping him relevant in fantasy football, even though his his work on the ground has not been impressive at all. Well, let's look at these values here. We got Brees Hall for Derrick Henry, Terry McLaurin in a 25 second. Yeah, you know, it's... I actually, I was looking at Brees Hall last night on one of my teams, and I was thinking about what I could get for him. So it was really funny that you you had him on here. I think if you're competitive, I might take this deal just because Derrick Henry is on a tear right now. He really is. And he doesn't look like he's going to slow down. And this looks like the perfect offense for him to continue to score a ton of fantasy points. Um, you look at how they're using Mark Andrews. This offense is built around Derrick Henry right now. I mean, they're foregoing Mark Andrews for you saying Henry. Mark Andrews exactly. Um, so I, I'm I'd be willing to invest in a Derrick Henry. You get Terry McLaurin a second on top. I mean, it's hard because I don't know if the value really lines up to where you feel like you should have had the value, like just at the end of the season last year. You know, it probably would have taken almost three first to get Brees Hall off of you. Um, and now you're looking at you know two veteran players in the second round pick. It doesn't feel good. Um, but if you're competitive, it might be the move to make because. Derrick Henry's going to be starring your lineup, and Terry McLaurin looking better here recently as well. Yeah, and uh, Derrick Henry leading the NFL in rushing yards with 480, tied f first in rushing touchdowns between him, Alvin Kamara, and Kyron Williams. Uh, let's look at the next one here. Brees Hall for Christian Kirk, James Cook, and a 25 second. Yeah, you know, this is interesting because it's similar to the last one. Um, you, got, you got a running back, you got a wide receiver, you got a second-round pick. Yep. Um, James Cook, a little bit younger than Derrick Henry, but not quite as productive, um, though he has looked pretty good at times this year. And the Bills are running a more run-heavy offense. That all said to stall while I make my decision on who I want. You know, I've been talking Christian Kirk up, but I might stick with Brees Hall here. Okay. Yeah, this is one where if I need more pieces than just that one piece, this is a good deal to take. Um, I kind of like the Derrick Henry trade a little bit more just because 
Derrick Henry just so good so far this year. Um, James Cook has been a little bit more inconsistent than I thought he would be. Um, but if you got a bunch of injuries or something like that and you need more pieces, sometimes to get better, you sell your best asset. I don't hate it. Let's look at one more. Brees Hall for T. Higgins and Jonathan Taylor. Yeah, this is an interesting one because Jonathan Taylor with like the lowest high ankle sprain in the world, apparently. Um, so I don't know how much is time he's actually an ankle sprain at that point. I, I guess so. Man, Mike, this is actually a really hard one because I I I, I do kind of want to go with the Higgins Taylor side, but I also want to keep Brees Hall. Um, what do you, I'm going to throw it back to you. What are you doing here? This is I think one. I'd I'd feel better if I knew what was going on with the. Um, Colts quarterback situation for the rest of the year mm. because you know Anthony Richardson hurt again. Is this just going to be an ongoing thing with this guy? T. Higgins been banged up to start the year, and you know, this is Dynasty. T. Higgins likely not going to be a Cincinnati Bengal next year. The good thing is he gets to pick where he goes. Um, it's a split, but I guess I'm probably just going to hold Brees Hall for right now. Uh, Jonathan Taylor still not back to that JT form that we know and yeah. love. He's getting there. That's where I lean for the moment. All right. I'm going to lean the same way as you. Okay. Uh, I'm going to keep Brees Hall here as well. All right. Let's talk about a player, Nate, who's connected to the wider. I'm sorry, the quarterback 16 on the season. Who do you got? I got Rashi Rice. Uh, go. Currently a 30 year rolling keep trade cut, wide receiver 11. So right behind Garrett Wilson. Um, what is his value now? I, I brought, I put him on the show sheet on Sunday after the injury happened. I was ready to come on here and talk about, all right, so Rashi Rice done for the season. You know, if you're a contending team, you know, do you move off of him? If you're a rebuilding team, um, do you invest now? Do you invest maybe in five or six weeks when he's a little bit cheaper? Um, you know, I was ready for that conversation, but sounds like maybe he didn't tear his ACL. As of recording, we really are not sure what's going on with Rashi Rice. But what I can glean from the research I've done and the news I've kept up with, it sounds like he did not tear his ACL. Um, sounds like there was still a you know decent injury to his knee. Um, I would expect him to be up for an extended amount of time, but I also don't necessarily expect it to be season ending. Um, I don't know if he comes back before the playoffs or if he, you know, if he comes if he comes back for like the last couple of weeks of the regular season in the playoffs, or if he waits for the playoffs. I don't know. No one knows at this moment, but it does sound like there's a chance he comes back this year at some point. Um, so all that being said, wide receiver 12 in the season, 24 uh, receptions with 288 yards and two touchdowns. The Mahomes wide receiver one right now. Lots of hype around Rashi Rice. And, I mean, going off of these values, Mike, I think I'm buying Rashi Rice. Um, everyone's scared. Uh, so let me throw these at you. Justin Fields in the second for Rashi Rice. Yeah, they, they're still not sure if Justin Fields is going to start the rest of the season or what. I mean, if Justin Fields was the starting quarterback we knew for the rest of the year, I'd probably lean that side but we still don't know. Just, you know, a quarterback, we know he's playing. Yeah. Also, in all these trades, you know, your team is going to depend on if you're a rebuilding team or competitive team and what you want to, you know, if you have wide receiver depth. If you have no wide receiver depth, you probably need to move on from Rashi Rice to save your team, you know, yes. and still be competitive. If you have wide receiver depth, you don't need to move on from Rashi Rice. If you're rebuilding, Rashi Rice is an incredible target to go after right now. Next one here, Jaden Reed or Rashi Rice? Like Jaden Reed. Oh yeah, Jayden you know Reed. I'm I'm such Red a Jaden Reed right guy. I was a Jaden Reed guy when he's in Michigan State, man. I'm I'm so excited for how he's doing. I have so much Jaden Reed. I'm really loving it. I know we're about to talk about him in a minute, so we'll get there in a second. But uh, last one I got for you: Rashi Rice or Chris Godwin plus Brian Robinson. This one's tough. You know, mm -hmm. he could Rashi Rice could be out two weeks, six, miss the season. We don't know. Chris Godwin looks really good putting it back in the slot. Looks like it's going to. I don't want to say resurrect his career, but definitely give it a nice little boost. And Brian Robinson's been actually a little bit better than I thought he was going to be this year. Um, yeah, if I have a really, really good team and I think I can win it, I'm probably going to make the Chris Godwin and Brian Robinson move. But I like both sides, to be honest with you. Slightly leaning Chris Godwin and Brian Robinson. Yeah, I think this trade is the biggest rebuild versus contending team kind For of trade. Sure. If you're a contender, sure. Chris Godwin and Brian Robinson gives you an incredible boost to your starting lineup right now. If you're a rebuilding team, Rashi Rice is a great dynasty asset to just throw on the IR. So I can certainly go either way here, team dependent, and I'm going to leave it there. Hey, let's get back into it, and let's talk about the aforementioned Jaden Reed. Why were we talking about Romeo Dubs and Don Tavian Wicks all offseason? Look, they're uh, good. They've been good, but Reed's the guy. He's the wide receiver one. Check this out. I put this together. On the season, 22 receptions. 336 yards, two touchdowns. 
Six rushes, 91 yards, and one touchdown. That's his season. So far, Dontavian Wicks and Romeo Dubs have combined for 20 receptions. That's two less. 273 yards, about 60 yards less. Three touchdowns. So they do have one more receiving touchdown, but no rushing yards. So you are getting a two-for-one deal, essentially, with Jaden Reed. This guy is legit. Jordan Love, Malik Willis, doesn't matter who's under center. Get the ball to Jaden Reed. Christian Watson got hurt again, so he's in the blue medical tent. Let's talk about what he costs, though, Nate. A 25 first. You think he's oh, absolutely. If you can get Jaden Reed for a 25 first, you're stealing. Yes. Jaden Reed for Jalen Waddle and a 26 first. It's a little bit closer. A little bit closer. Um, you know, the tough thing with Jaden Reed right now is he's the wide receiver four in the season. So, yeah. I mean, he's playing like a top 10 dynasty wide receiver. So if he continues to play like that, I'm keeping him over Jalen Waddle in 26 first. Now, if you'd ask me, even with his production right now, if Waddle sled Tua, I'd probably lean the Waddle first side. And I know Tua's probably going to come back. That's my opinion. I think he's going to come back. But how long will he be back for? I don't know. And I yeah. I don't necessarily want to tie uh, my horse to that pole. Uh, that's a new saying I just made up. Tie my horse to that pole. All right. That'll be on a shirt coming soon. <laughs> and last one here, Jaden Reed. For a 25 second and I'm sorry, Jaden Reed and a 25 second for Puka Nakua. That is an actual trade that I saw. That is an interesting trade. I don't know. I haven't really kept up with the Puka Nakua news. I don't know when he's coming back. Let's um, but that happened at this point. That was two days ago. That trade ago. today's October 1st. Yeah, probably Jaden Reed and 25 second because I trust the quarterback long term more, but. I could also go Puka Nakua here. I'm, I might go Puka Nakua here just because Puka Nakua is that good. I mean, Jaden Reed trying to do what Puka Nakua did his rookie year would be incredible. Well, it says here as of two days ago, yet again, Puka Nakua out at least another month. <sighs> so disappointing. Yeah. So, so if you're a competitive team, maybe it is the Reed in the second side. You know, it's tough when you're a competitive team. Sometimes you got to get rid of players who are better yeah. dynasty-wise to make sure that your team can contend. This is what you you want to get a championship. You got to move these pieces, not feel bad about it. Let's move on. Nate, who do you have next? All right. We got to talk about this guy because he's currently the quarterback one on the season. Rookie quarterback, Jaden Daniels. Currently four overall on keep trade cut. Mike, he's quarterback two. Yeah. Malik Neighbors, I believe he was like wide receiver three on keep trade cut. Deservedly so. Wide receiver one on the season. Um, Daniels looks incredible right now. And incredible is probably an understatement. Because when that stat released of him having the best completion percentage through four games, at first I was like, oh, wow, that's pretty impressive, you know, to have the best four games for a rookie completion percentage. But no, that is the best four games for any player, not just rookie season. That is any season, the best start to a season. So, I mean, averaging 23.7 points per game right now, he's got the arm, he's got the rushing upside. My only question with Daniels, which is the question I really had him when he was coming out, my biggest question was, can he stay healthy? Um, so far he has, but also me watching Anthony Richardson, who's much bigger than Jaden Daniels, consistently get hurt. Can you know it, it does concern me, even though it's not Jaden Daniels, it still concerns me. Um, Lamar gets down really well. If Jaden Daniels can be like Lamar and just constantly get down, I wouldn't be too worried about it. But how Daniels ran in college was not that way. So he does look better. He's taken care of himself so far. So I'm not too worried about that at the moment. But really, 23.7 points per game, that is really impressive. Lamar's got 23. Baker's got 22. Sam Darnold has 20.3. Those are your four quarterbacks currently over 20 points per game. Crazy. Uh, if you had told me that a month ago, I would not have believed you. But here are the trades, Mike. I know he says that he's quarterback two on keep trade cut, but I don't think the trade value has actually lined up quite with that yet. Um, so Caleb in a first for Jaden Daniels in a second. So Caleb Williams and a first round pick I'm giving up to get Jaden Daniels in a second. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I might take Daniels. You know, I, I had a lot of questions about Caleb Williams coming out, his ability to process. Um, we've seen him running around in the backfield. I haven't seen Jaden Daniels do that. That was one of the, my concerns with Caleb Williams. So go ahead and I'll make that deal. Yeah, this is another one. You told me a month ago I would have, I would have taken Caleb in a first every single time. Yeah, most people probably would have. Every single time. And I'm still considering it now, but I will um, lean. 
lot. It's just a tough one for me because I still love Caleb a lot. I love getting a first round pick. I'm gonna go with Caleb in a first round pick. Look. Oh my uh, gosh, look yeah. at me. All right. Uh Jaden Daniels for Joe Burrow. Probably gonna go Jaden Daniels at this point. Yeah, same. And look at look at how far we've come from a few years ago. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> where we're at. That's where we're at. All right. Um, and here's a player we talked about already. Rashad White and Brees Hall. Rashad White has not looked as good this year as he's as he did last year. Not even close. Um, that being said, the Brees Hall and Rashad White, you're talking about got two top five running backs from 2023. I don't I don't know. Jaden Daniels for me. I yeah, know I know it's two, but honestly, for me, I, I, I called Rashad White a sell last week. So for me, this is a really easy trade. Okay. Actually, I put this one here because I was thinking, you know, if you can make this trade, I would. I would certainly go do it. Let's talk about another quarterback. Let's talk about Anthony Richardson of the Indianapolis Colts. Hey, uh oh, he's hurt. Okay. Uh, Joe Flacco doesn't seem to age. Uh, also, I saw a stat, not a stat, but just a statement that Joe Flacco is the same age as Anthony Richardson's mother. He <laughs> stepped in I and won that, yeah. leave us 39 year olds alone. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, He's completing just over 50% of his passes, 50.6%. His touchdown to interception rate, touchdown to interception ratio is three touchdowns to six interceptions. Not what we wanted to see in his second year here. May not play next week. And you likely invested a lot to get him in the draft or trade. However, you had to come across getting him on your roster. So what are we doing, Nate? Let's figure it out. Yep. Anthony Richardson in a 25 fourth for joe burrow and a 26 second i will take burrow in a second um i have anthony richardson in one league it was a startup this year um our our c to c startup actually that we had huh. and i was at the back of the first round none of the quarterbacks that i really wanted were there so i did pick up anthony richardson with the idea that i could trade him this season um i meant to do it soon so i would love to pick up burrow in a second um I'm going to save you some trouble. I don't want him. But I'm going to also go the Burrow and 26 second side. Uh, Anthony Richardson and a 27 first for Chris Godwin and Justin Herbert. Give me Chris Godwin and Justin Herbert. Yeah, that first is pretty far out. Uh, last one, Anthony Richardson for Dak and a second. Dak Prescott. Yeah, I think this one is a bit more of a, a head scratcher because Dak hasn't looked quite as good this year as he did last year. True. And if that was a first-round pick, I'd be more so on the Dak side. But I think I'm going to stay on the A-Rich side. Okay. Um, I'd rather trade for somebody else or keep him and see what happens. Probably still going Dak in a second for me. Uh, I get it. You think about it, I get, I'm going to get a guy in there who historically has just been more consistent overall, healthier. He's missed some time. I'm not going to say he hasn't. Um, but then I could use that second-round pick at some point during the season to hopefully fill out my roster mm -hmm. if I'm competing for anything else that I need. So, you know, when you're looking at these trades, you're like, oh, well, you want players, blah, blah, blah. You don't want picks. Yeah, but those picks that you're getting, those picks are players. Whether they're on your roster now or later, they become players.